If you're in Northern Australia and you want to know when's the right time to tend to your lawn, just go for a tiptoe through the turf. If I can walk from here to there without getting bindi eye spines in my feet, this lawn will be in good health. There's the first one, and, and there's plenty more. This lawn is full of bindi eye. I now declare the lawn maintenance season open. Lawns have a bit of a bad reputation for chewing up resources and using a lot of time and effort just to look decent. But it doesn't have to be that way. Wherever you garden in Australia, all a decent lawn requires is learning a few good habits. Now, weeds in lawns can be unsightly. I get that. But the main problem with weeds in lawns is that the lawns can then infest the rest of the garden. On my property, this is where I draw the line, and I defend my property against weeds, particularly flickweed, which lives in that nature strip, and on many occasions I've been on my hands and knees pulling it out. Now, flickweed doesn't just grow in lawns, it'll grow in footpaths, pot plants, everywhere. If you let this thing into your garden, you'll never get rid of it. And that's why I'm obsessed with this weed. <laughs> There's one specimen down here, and it's got to go. Removing it will protect the whole of my garden and my lawn. If you see it, give it the flick. With some weeds, it's best not to pull them out the ground. This is Bulbus oxalis, and pulling it out will actually spread the bulbils so you get loads of them growing everywhere. Instead of pulling, I use boiling water. And the idea is to dribble this on so that it soaks through and scalds the bulbs beneath. If it doesn't kill them in the first go, then try a second time, but it's very effective. If you have a large infestation of a flatweed like Bindii, then you need a different solution. And what I use is iron sulphate. The formula is two tablespoonfuls of iron sulphate dissolved in nine litres of water. Now I'm putting them into this pantyhose because this tends to have granules in it. If I don't remove these from the solution, they may end up blocking the nozzle on the rows of my watering can and that makes application very, very difficult. Now that's dissolved. This thing goes in here. And it's ready for use. The reason this solution is so effective on flatweeds is because they don't have large energy stores like a taproot or a bulb so they can be killed in one or two applications. And don't be surprised if they turn black overnight. This weed killer burns. One caution with using iron sulphate, if you splash it on favourite plants, paving, roads, clothes, rinse it off immediately, it will stain. These quick fixes are really handy for nipping small infestations of weeds in the bud and preventing a major crisis. But they're giving us a message. And if we listen to those messages and change the way we manage our lawns, we can make grass growth so vigorous that it's difficult for weeds to invade. Lawns that are cut too low allow prostrate weeds, flat weeds, to invade the lawn. They create a window of opportunity. So the first strategy to oppose weeds and enhance the turf is to raise the height of cut on your lawnmower. And this one is set as high as it will cut. Turf allowed to grow longer will shade out lower lying weeds. Shade turf develops bald patches inviting weed invasion. Turf cut high naturally smothers and outcompetes many lawn weeds. It will also trap more evaporation and dew, keeping more moisture in the soil. Capturing dewfall can be crucial to keeping a lawn green during dry weather. 
Many weeds have the cutting edge over turf where the soil is compacted, and the solution here is aeration. Aeration will loosen the soil, helping grass roots to penetrate deeply and helping air, water and nutrients to enter freely. These improvements invite earthworm activity which prolong their impact on the lawn, keeping the soil healthy. I do this once a year during spring when turf growth resumes. This is my secret weapon. It's pulverised sheep manure. And sieved over the lawn, it covers any exposed rhizomes and really stimulates vigorous growth. But far more importantly than that, this is my premium worm food. Good lawns need lots of worm activity and their burrowing and aeration and drainage work carries on from the application of this from one year until the next. And that's why this lawn tends to look green even during prolonged drought. So you see, it's really all about good habits. With practice, you'll have healthy soil, lots of worms and a lush green lawn. It's all about tipping the balance in favour of the garden. And you never know, within time, you'll be able to wander barefoot through your lawn with confidence. Mm -hmm.